I'm John Bruner here at OzCon in Portland at the Hardware Showcase, and I've got Gleb Budman from Backblaze with me. Hi, Gleb. Hi, man. Good to see you. Tell me what you're doing here. So what we actually do is a $5 a month, totally unlimited online backup. So we'll back up your laptop, desktop for five bucks a month, completely unlimited, and if it's not your OS or your apps, we'll just back it up. You enter an email address, password, click download, it's done, and then you can get to your data anywhere you want, um, whether it's from a web browser, from your phone, we'll even FedEx you a hard drive or a flash key with up to 120 gigs of your data anywhere in the world. And you, that's it. It's very, very simple service so that if you so that you don't lose your data. And and uh, you're into hardware. We are. So when we started that company, we said it's going to be five bucks a month, and it's going to be totally unlimited amount of storage, so that people don't have to worry about it. And the question was, where do you put all that data, and how do you do that cost efficiently? And so we were planning on putting it on Amazon S3 way too expensive, we were planning on buying EMC or Dell or NetApp or something way too expensive. So we ended up deciding to try and build hardware ourselves to store all that data. And everybody said, ah, that's nuts, you'll never do it, you know, you, you can't compete with, you know, multi-billion dollar EMC or whatever. And we didn't have a choice, so we tried. And so we actually built this storage pod, um, which holds 180 terabytes worth of storage. The box itself only costs three grand, um, which is cheaper than like a lot of prosumer NAS boxes. And we just started building those and we started using them. And after a year and a half, we actually open sourced the hardware design um, for that. And about a million people read that blog post. So we were like, wow, I guess people care about big storage. And we, over time, have continued to use them. So now we have 100 petabytes um, worth of data, which is about a quarter of the size of Facebook, um, stored just for our $5 a month backup customers on that, and we add about five petabytes every month. Wow. Um, but since we open sourced it, there are now also hundreds and hundreds of companies around the world that use it for all sorts of stuff. Um, Harvard uses it for medical archiving, um, Red Bull uses it for photo and video storage, um, Netflix came and was interested in how we did it and they, they made a version of it for caching movies closer to you. It, people are using it for all sorts of purposes. So how low level did your work go in developing the, uh, the storage server? So we tried as a philosophy to buy commodity parts and figure out how to assemble them. Because the idea at some level was anything that's designed for the data center has an IT tax on it and it's gonna be more expensive. So we said, can we find parts and make them all fit together? And we, we thought it would be like furniture. You know, you just, you build a box that's kind of like a living room and you put all the furniture in place and everything should work. It didn't quite work uh, that way. Um, we, we tried USB, we tried Firewire, we, we you know, the, this is supposed to work. But no one tests what happens when you connect 45 hard drives to uh, through USB. Um, so we ended up coming up with various different designs before we finally made it happen. Um, so we designed the actual case. We designed all, uh, all of the interactions between the components. But the components we buy. So we buy the boards, we buy the motherboards, we buy the power supplies, and we try as hard as we can to buy stuff that is commodity. And what's the benefit been to you from open sourcing all of this? It's actually been interesting because I, um, so my wife was a lawyer, so she was like, "What are you doing? You know, why would you give that away?" Um, but it, it's been various things. I mean, one was that it helped obviously build awareness of what we were doing, which was useful. Um, one was it established a certain amount of technical credibility. How do you know that you can trust us with your backup? Well, this was part of establishing that credibility. Partially, it's also we really wanted. We never intended to be in the designing hardware business. Um, we were a software company. And so we were hoping that by open sourcing the hardware, other people would go, oh, that's interesting. I could do that, or I could sell that, or I could innovate on that. And the platform would become more established. And then we might at some point just start buying a hardware from people that was cost efficient. And some of that has started happening. There are actually companies that have gotten into the business of taking our design and started companies around it selling um, st storage. Excellent. It's a terrific story. Thank you so much, Club. Yeah, thanks so much, John.